Hi everybody, it's Angelia. Welcome back to Read and Reread. Today I am doing a haul video. It's kind of a collective haul from the past couple months. I don't think I've done a haul video since maybe like, I don't know, earlier this summer maybe? June or July or something like that. But these are books that mostly I got really like in the past week or so because I kind of went on a binge. Like once we got moved in, I don't know, something unleashed and I had to get a bunch of books. But um, a couple of them are from right before I moved, and I probably, I think I showed them in like Friday Reads, that oh, I got this book, but they never got to participate in a haul video, so they are getting their moment today. Also, technical problems. So I am doing an experiment today. I am filming this on a new phone that I got this week to see was one reason why I chose this phone was because of its high reviews for camera and video. So I'm going to just see how it works as a video camera on this video. Um, so I've had a lot of technical issues. Just try to set up and see if it looks okay and stuff like that. I have a lot of lighting problems that part, partly are the conditions with the, um, the clouds and the sun, but a lot of it has to do with me and my coloring because I was trying to set this up earlier and I was like, why do I look, I look like, like a white blue, like I like I have zombie makeup for Halloween. And I didn't know it was like between the lights and the windows and the shades. And then Stephen walked in and he looked totally normal. Like he was registering completely normal color on the camera and I just look like an apparition. So I, and there's nothing I can do about that. So if I always look like a ghost, that's, that's how I look. All right, but anyway, forget about all of my technical lack of prowess and moving on to the haul, which is the good stuff. All right, so the old ones, that when I say old, I mean from like, you know, three or four weeks ago. I, um, okay, here's one of them. It got away. Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. I did read Olive Kitteridge and I have a copy of it, but when I read Olive Again, I, it was a library book and so I wanted my own copy and I saw it at the thrift store for a couple bucks. So I got one and I will reread some of these again. I'm kind of, uh, my mood for her has sort of been reignited since I just read Oh William. So I did pick that up. I also picked up at a thrift store. Why am I so close? I'm like, ah. maybe that's one of the things that we got to adjust here. Um, the Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum, and this is a mystery book about an African-American man who has had to conquer some family uh, obstacles, poverty obstacles, and racism in society obstacles to become an award-winning violinist, and on the eve of an important um, competition his violin is stolen and the violin that he has it he thought it was just a hand-me-down that they found that like in the attic or something but it's actually a priceless Stradivarius which I guess at some point he he is aware of this since he is a violinist but somebody else is aware of it too and they steal it and then that's that's the mystery so that I will read um I've seen it on a few lists of good mysteries that have come out this year so I, I'm gonna read it when I'm one of the times that my mystery mood strikes. And I think it's kind of interesting because most of the ones I read are um, murder mysteries and this one is a theft mystery. So that to me is kind of interesting. It'll be a little bit of a change of pace. Also, at the Goodwill, I found this massive Willa Cather anthology, which has O Pioneers, The Song of the Lark, and Alexander's Bridge, the three novels, and a bunch of short stories so I will pick out one of the short stories to do for my short story shorty September that I've been working on um, I don't know anything about her short stories I'm f kind of familiar with the novels even though I've only read my Antonia and I really liked it so that's why I picked this up so then some of the things I ordered were because um, I wanted to read them for shorty September some of them were um, booker titles that I really wanted enough to buy or the library wasn't going to have them and then some of them 
I just wanted them. I don't know. So we have we have the trees by Percival Everett. This is the book that I just finished, and I am processing my thoughts on this reading experience, and I'll be talking about this on uh, Friday. But I loved it, and I'm just wrapping my mind around what just happened when I was reading this book because it was so many things somehow combined in this book and I don't know how he pulled this off but it was awesome and I really hope I, that it makes the shortlist which is supposed to be announced today but had not yet been announced at the time of this taping. All right I also purchased Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. I loved this book as well. It's so different. Um, I've read three. I'm really behind. I've read three of these Booker long list titles and then there's one more I'm picking up today at the library which is Trust and I have I think I have another one here in the pile but the three that I've read I've liked them all a lot but they have been very different um, although I will say that there is a thematic element in trees and small things like these that they both have to do with um, a persistent wrong in society that needs to be addressed and that's that's all I'm going to say at this moment about that all right then um, the other one that is a book or a title that I bought and I think that I got um, I got small things like these at thrift books and also trees. I got case study from somebody on Pango Books. That's um, one where um, a website where people can sell. It's kind of like eBay or Etsy, but just books. People sell books that they want to sell, and they you know you can look through and pick. They have different pricings and things. So I got a copy of case study from someone else who was reading Booker titles and chose not to keep this one. But uh, she said it was good. And I did read His Bloody Project and liked it a few years ago. And I really love the cover. And so for these reasons, I purchased this book. And in this book, um, it is about, it takes place in 1965. And it is about a woman who starts seeing a psychotherapist because, as presents herself as a patient, but she's trying to investigate the death of her sister that she thinks um, has something to do with this therapist. So I am excited to read that soon. So those ones I will read sooner rather than later if I haven't read them already because I'm trying to keep up and I don't know what's going to be on the short list. But once I've earmarked it that I want to read it, even if it doesn't make the short list, I, I still want to read it and it's kind of up at the top of my list. And then I picked up a few other books. I picked up Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. And these are short stories. And I bought it right now for two reasons. One is because I'm doing my Shorty September project. And so it is timely that a well-reviewed collection of short stories has come along. And it provides diversity in my project as well because this is about um, a Native American community. And so uh, I think one particular recurring character um, who is from the Penobscot tribe of Maine and different things that happened throughout different points in his life. And I had seen it somewhere, reviewed it, sounded good, and I jotted it down. And then Greg on Supposedly Fun gave it such a rave review that it shot right up to the top of my list and I had to get it right away. So BookTube made me do it. Sorry, not sorry. Then um, I got Kindred at Half Price Books and um, I got it because I was looking for Parable of the Talents because I loved Parable of the Sower and they didn't have Parable of the Talents, but they had Kindred, which I also want to read. And so I bought it. So that was a case of went in for something, came out with something else. Again, sorry, not sorry. But 
but this is a time travel novel. Um, it says, Dana, a modern black woman, is celebrating her 26th birthday with her new husband when she is snatched abruptly from her home in California and transported to the antebellum South. So all of a sudden she finds herself in a slave setting in the South on a plantation, but knowing what she knows about life today. So I'm super intrigued to read that. I love a time travel book. I love Octavia Butler. So, you know, it's a win-win. Also, I got Strong Poison by Dorothy Sayers. And this is because I bought Gaudy Night, which BookTube made me do that too. And on somebody else's um, channel. And then I found out that it was sort of in the middle of a string of books about a particular character in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, and that you don't have to read the whole series of Lord Peter Whimsey, but you can excerpt, but you got to start about two books back from Gaudy Knight, and this is where the character is introduced. And so I bought it. I got a nice hardback copy, and um, so I'll read that when I'm ready for that kind of... Um, classic, um, you know, earlier 20th century mystery style and work my way up to Gaudy Night. There's another book in between that I need to, to acquire. And then I think this is my last one to share today. And this is The Walls Came Tumbling Down by Henrietta Rusenberg. This is a book that I read a long time ago. But it stayed in my mind, and I've wanted to read it again ever since. So the story behind this is I have a book. I should have brought it over, but I have a book. Um, what, I don't even remember what it's called. I think it's called A Reader's, a Reader's Delight. But it's, a, it's an older book that I got, oh, at least like 25 or 30 years ago, a long time ago, like late 80s, early 90s, I have this book. And the book is a sampler about different lesser known books that you should pursue if you love reading. And so this was a book that was suggested um, as a memoir about World War II that is not as well known as a lot of the other ones that, that we have read. And so this, I, so I, I read The Reader's Delight, and out of that, there were several books I found that became favorites of mine. And I read this from the library when I was in graduate school, they had it at the library, and I, re I read it just for pleasure, but it really stuck with me, and I always wanted to read it again, and I never have found it. It's never been in any library. Um, I couldn't find it in print or anywhere for the longest time. and. It came up for me the other day when I was on, yes, once again, thrift books. In fact, I bought so many things on thrift books that they gave me a free book again. And this one was in the price range of the free books. So what this is about, let me see if I see a, a summary here. Um, it is about um, Henriette Rusenberg. She was um, imprisoned in a concentration camp during World War II for being a resistance um, member of the resistance. She was um, she was Dutch, and what this what the story is about. I'm not explaining this well because it's been so long since I read it, and I haven't really looked through it again. But it really it's more about when she gets released and her journey home, because basically they liberated the camp. And they said, well, you know, good news, you have survived and you are now free. But they didn't really, they didn't like help them out or transport them. They just set them free. And so she travels on foot across the countryside on her way back home towards home and family after having been in, in this camp. And I just remember how striking this was and that her difficulties did not end at the moment of her freedom from the camp. And anyway, so I always wanted to read it again. And now I have it. I hope that it lives up to my memory when I get around to reading it. All right. So that is the pile. And then I, you know, I joined the library here and they're having a book sale like tomorrow or the next day.
we'll see what happens. And there's one more book that has not gotten here in the mail as well. So I was kind of waiting around for it, but then I was ready to do the video and I had all these books. So there is one more straggler, but I will have to highlight that at another time. But that's it for now. You can let me know how you feel about any of these books or things I should put on my list. But that is, uh, that's how it's going right now. And we'll see how the quality of this video turns out. I mean, I might have been, you know, looking in the wrong spot the whole time or lit up like a Christmas tree or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. And um, I will see you for Friday Reads. Bye.